Hey guys, Matt from Schnee's here today. Uh, we're gonna talk about boot selection for your hunt. Probably the number one question we get asked, what boot is the best for your specific hunt, environment, temperature, place, everything. And uh, if you ever call us, that's what we'll go over on the phone. The first thing you gotta ask yourself is, where are you hunting? Are you hunting in Alaska? Are you hunting sheep? Uh, or are you hunting uh, antelope on the prairie here in Montana? Depending on what you say, we might steer you in a different direction or a better direction, I should say. So today we got a good variety of boots from our lineup going from the least stiff to the stiffest. Uh, and they each kind of have their use case and some of them are just kind of like a good all rounder. So uh, let's start at the very steep end, like the steepest boots that we make or the stiffest boots we make. This is the Granite Pro. On our flex scale, this is a four. This is the stiffest boot we make. I, I can hardly bend the toe, fully crampon compatible. You know, where and when would you wanna use this boot? This is meant for really, really gnarly terrain, very steep, rocky areas. It is an uninsulated boot, so you can use it, you know, when it's hot out. We have a, a very well-known guide that loves to use these boots sheep hunting down in Mexico. All the way up to people who just are mountaineering folks that want a good, high alpine boot. The other thing that plays into a boot that we might steer you towards is your physical size and how much weight you're gonna be carrying. Just like trucks, like there's a half ton and a three quarter ton and a one ton truck. This is like your one ton truck. It's meant to carry a very heavy load. So if you're 250 ish or more uh, and just need a boot, this would probably be a good pick or it's little brother, the regular granite, simply because it can handle more weight and more load being put into the boot. Stepping down from the Granite Pro, this is our Flex 3 boot. This is the Granite Zero Gram. It's available in a couple different installations, but this is our, our sheep hunting boot. Uh, it's made for guys that spend a lot of time in really gnarly terrain up north. This is a very popular boot with guides in uh, you know Alaska, BC, that sort of thing. The stiffness is just very conducive to the, like the terrain they walk in. Whether or not you would get insulated, uninsulated, 600 grams of insulation uh, we offer. It's kind of personal choice and, you know, dependent on where and when you're hunting. Like guys who hunt mountain goats in BC in the wintertime are gonna want an insulated boot. It's gonna be really cold, 600 gram granite, probably your best choice. If you're going desert sheep hunting, but don't necessarily want a super stiff boot like the Granite Pro, this is probably the best boot for you. Again, if you're a bigger guy, you probably want a stiffer boot just because it can handle, like I said, more, more weight, more load if you're packing in or out heavy, uh, it just gives you a little added stability there. Coming on down the line, this is a Flex 2 in our Flex scale. This is my favorite boot. It's just a great all around boot. It's more flexible, still a stiff boot, but it's it's just really good. It's not overly stiff. I spend a lot of time like in rocky areas or side hilling and stuff, and this thing, it, it's been a godsend. It really stabilizes your ankle. So if you're, if you're side hilling, this thing just wants to stay flat. It doesn't want to roll like you know, more flimsier boots out there would. Thick leather construction, a rubber rand, those are things you look for uh, in a high quality like mountain boot. They're just built to withstand the rigors of like mountain hunting and hiking in scree and shale and that sort of thing. Underneath, you'll see in a good mountain boot, good tread obviously, but something we do is we use like a proprietary rubber compound in our Vibram outsoles, geared more towards Western hunting. It stays softer, tackier, almost the way that a winter like car tire would, so it grips better when it, the temperatures start to get colder. Not something a lot of other places do. We do it, it's just a great, great little feature in our in our boots. So that's the bare tooth, middle of the, middle of the scale. 90% of the time I steer guys towards this boot for any kind of Western hunting. It's like I said, it's just a great all around boot. You could hike steep stuff in it, you could hike forest service roads or something if you have to put in a lot of miles, great boot. Moving on down, this is a Flex 1. More flexible, still still a very durable, you know, capable mountain boot, but more flexible. And it's very similar to our Beartooth. And you'll see that just coloring really is a big difference. Uninsulated, this boot is geared more towards like hill country, prairie hunting, like antelope, that sort of thing. It's, it's just a great early season boot. The reason it exists is we, we had the Beartooth for a long time and guys out there, there's just like a, a set of guys that they just want more flex in a boot. Or if you live in the Midwest and you don't necessarily have a lot of hills or mountains, you wanna be able to use your boot a lot more than just your one trip out west of here. So this is a good option. You can use this to chase whitetails where you live out in the Midwest uh, or come out here and hunt elk in it. It's just a great all around boot. It's not as stiff as this, so you will lose a little bit of that support, but you're still not gonna be wanting for much. We have uh, one of our ambassadors actually wore these boots on his sheep hunt. So you can do a lot in this boot. 
um, very capable. Coming on down the lineup, uh, we have our Kestrel. This is our most flexible boot. I mean, it's it's really comfortable. I wear this boot a lot in the early season, uh, even out just hiking local trails, that sort of thing. This is a great option if you know you want to chase prairie antelope, just like a hiking boot or a good early season archery boot when light and fast is the goal. Obviously still a very capable mountain boot. We have plenty of guys that hunt elk and high country mule deer in this boot still. If you like a good flexible boot, this is your, your choice. Still has a very durable outsole, just like the rest of our boots. That's, that's our most flexible boot, that's the Kestrel. So there you have it. This is kind of like a good summation of the Schnee lineup from our most stiff boot to our most flexible boot. We make a boot for pretty much any hunt. If you have any questions about that, or you know what boot would fit your hunt best give us a call myself or one of our other customer service folks will answer we all wear and hunt in our boots so we know what we're talking about so you just got a new set of mountain boots now comes the hard part of breaking them in you hear a lot of guys talk about breaking in boots because it can be a nightmare it's not fun i would say you know maybe 30 to 40 percent of the time especially with our boots for whatever reason they're super comfortable out of the box guys can put them on and they're just super comfortable ready to go uh, the other 60 percent of folks, including myself, you gotta break your boots in. How do you break them in? So there's a bunch of different ways to do that. You know, a lot of times if you're if you're in the Midwest and you're getting a pair of boots for your first hunt out west and you're trying to break them in, you don't have access to mountains and hills and that sort of thing to climb to break your boots in. So you just gotta walk. And that's great. Like, you know, walking will just flex this over time, breaking it in. And when we talk about breaking in boots, there's two big areas. Basically right here, the toe flex point and the back area where your ankle wants to bend. And it's just softening up that leather, just like if you were, if you ever broke in a baseball glove as a kid, you're trying to soften up that leather so it doesn't wanna stay very rigid. Your options if you live in Flatland are walking basically, or one thing I recommend to folks is there's a couple different treadmills out there that like the front of it kind of raises up a lot. And what that does is make you walk on your toes more, just like if you're walking up a hill out west. That just works the leather differently than if you were just to walk flat ground all the time. The best way to break in boots is just working them different, doing the same motion over and over. Sure, it'll break in that leather right here, but what you're trying to do is twist it and move it and get it working all around to soften it up in multiple areas. One thing you can do, if you have like a like a hot spot or an area that's like kind of rough and doesn't want to break in, I recommend putting like just a, a small dab of like a leather conditioner on them. Uh, and that just kind of soaks into the leather and those oils help soften it up. It's not gonna be a magic bullet. They aren't gonna break in overnight, but it will help speed it up a little bit. The less stiff boots are a little bit quicker to break in. The Kestrels really don't require much break in. Timberlines are very similar to Beartooths. Usually we recommend, you know, 15, 25 miles, maybe 30 miles, give or take, is like a good reasonable break in time. And then you get into the granite. So our granite boots, they're made out of a leather that's physically thicker and more rigid than the rest of our boots. The midsole's also a lot stiffer. So as you can imagine, they take more time. I usually tell folks, 30 to 50 miles break in time. And that's usually pretty close. The Granite Pro is, a, it's a beast. So I would definitely plan around 50 miles, uh, you know, maybe give or take, depending on your foot uh, to get that guy good and softened up. The goal with all this, after breaking in your boot is you should have no hot spots. You should be able to fit the boot to your, your anatomy. So your ankle and your toes and everything better. One thing that can take in mind, and we hear about this a lot is out of the box, you can get some heel slip. It can be hard to tighten a pair of boots completely. And that's because the leather we build them out of is very rigid. It doesn't wanna give, it doesn't wanna move with your foot. As that leather softens up, it starts to conform around your foot. And even things like lacing, like it, it doesn't wanna like hold its shape so it'll physically get smaller, like it wants to conform more so you can physically lace it down tighter. And as that happens, it just starts to fit your foot better and better. The granites are a good example of this. Out of the box, they can be uh, a bear, honestly, for me anyways. After a certain amount of time, it's like someone flips a switch and they are just super comfortable. Boot break-in is really, it's a, it's not a fun process, but it's a necessary process. So you got yourself some new boots and now you need to take care of them. First thing you need to do is, you know, out of the box, if you look at different boots, some of them are kind of waxy and shiny, just like this granite is like a waxy finish. That's a wax leather. Out of the box, these are pretty good to go. If you look at these granites, it's a softer, like a matte finish. These are not a wax leather. So I always recommend to folks, you know, you try them at home. Once you're confident in the fit and the feel and everything, you're good to go. You're committed to them. You're going to break them in, all that. I always recommend treating them. There's a lot of information about boot treatment and stuff out there. This product right here is the only product 
made specifically for a leather mountain boot with a membrane in it. It's the only product we recommend on our boots and in any leather boot with a membrane, frankly, it, whether it's our brand or someone else's. I use this, hit it with a coat of, uh, or yeah, hit the boots with a coat of Nick wax after you use them and you'll see here in a second, it'll have that waxy appearance. This says waterproofing wax paste and the boots out of the box are waterproof. Uh, what you're doing with these products is helping seal up and protect the leather for a few reasons. One is if the leather's soaking up water like a sponge, you're gonna have to carry that weight on your foot, which is not fun. And two, when leather soaks up water and then dries out, it ends up drying out the leather faster. So by putting this product on, you're protecting the leather, keeping it conditioned. Water will beat off once it's applied, which is nice. And you're just helping the leather basically get the most get the most life out of your leather by keeping it well protected. Now, why only this? So other products out there, they kind of do two things that are bad for mountain boots. The first thing, the biggest thing is leather conditioners uh, and creams and stuff like that out there. They work great on leather. It makes your leather look great, awesome. Over time, it'll over soften your leather though. You paid all this money for these awesome boots with rigid leather and it gives you support from the rigid leather. So if you use those products on your boots, it over softens to the point where the leather starts to get really floppy and loose and you lose a lot of that good support. The second thing is those oils uh, in, the, in the products you're using kind of permeate down through the leather over time. Then underneath your leathers, your membrane, your padding, all that stuff underneath, it can inhibit the membrane's performance over time by basically clogging up. I always tell guys to picture it like you're rubbing a wax candle on a screen door at a microscopic level. That's what's happening with a lot of other products out there. That's right out of the box. Now say you've been using your boots for a little while, a season or two, these are my boots, and they start to look dry, they don't have the waxy appearance anymore, then you hit them with Nick Wax again. I typically will put this stuff on three to four times in a season. It's not something that lasts forever, you do have to reapply it. And I'll demonstrate basically how that works here in a second. After like, I don't know, about two or three seasons or years or a lot of use, or if you hunt in the desert a lot, you notice your boots starting to look very pale, like the leather's lost its color or pigment or it starts cracking. Then I recommend using just a really thin light coat of this. This is our premium leather conditioner. It's not like a high fat contact one, it's kind of waxy. It's like putting lotion on your hands. You're just rehydrating that leather, bringing it back to life. You'll notice almost as soon as you put it on, the leather soaks it up, it gets that color back and it just comes back to life. After you apply a conditioner, then we recommend, again, hitting it with Nick Wax, putting it over the top. Typically when I put it on, I'll wash my boot with like a nylon brush, some lukewarm water, scrub it good. You don't wanna get it super soaking wet. I'll just let it air dry at room temperature. The next day, I'll, if it needs conditioner, I'll put a little bit of conditioner on. I'll let it dry again overnight and then I'll hit it with Nick Wax. If it's just Nick Wax, you just put that on, then you're good to go. Using Nick Wax, uh, it's, it's really easy to apply. You just remove the cap. Underneath is like a little spongy applicator. The first time you use it, I like to press down and it pops like a little seal or something in there. And then uh, you're good to go. So you just kind of hold it like that. You don't need to, it comes out pretty easy. You don't need to squeeze it very hard. You just kind of do that. And then it rubs in and uh, I'll use like a rag or something like that to uh, get the excess off. It is pretty watery, so be careful. You don't want to make a mess. Your wife might get mad at you but you can just rub it in like that. And you see that boot just instantly gets a waxy conditioned finish on it, almost reflective. And that's, that's what you're looking for. Sometimes if your boots are really dry, it might take more than that. You can let them dry and see if it just soaked it all in or not. And you might have to reapply in a couple spots, but usually just a thin coat will work just fine. Then your boots are ready to go out into the field again. All right, so we went over all the things you do wanna do to take care of your boots. Now let's go to, through the things that you don't wanna do if you wanna keep your boots around for a long time. So I guess the, the biggest thing is heat. So heat's a boots like kind of enemy. Whether it's drying out or just sitting in heat, you don't want it to be in a high heat environment. A good rule of thumb is if it's too hot for your hand, it's too hot for your boot. We get asked all the time, how do you dry your boots out? It depends. Like if you're in a hunting camp in a wall tent, you gotta work with what you got. Typically I'll hang these up uh, high up in the tent, you know, because hot air rises. You don't wanna get it too close to a wood stove or anything like that, especially not next to a fire. What'll happen is if the boot gets too hot, some of the adhesives and uh, things that are involved in like the lamination process, it can overheat them to the point where they fail and it'll start like your rubber rand could start peeling or you know things happening inside the boot. Delamination between a midsole and your uh, upper. Those are the things that can happen with heat. 
If you're at home, just a fan, like I'll just leave my boots out in a room. Sometimes I'll leave them like this and put something underneath so the air goes in them. Just a fan on them at room temperature. It might take a while, but you won't dry out your boots too fast. That's important because leather, if it gets super saturated and you dry it out too fast, uh, it can shrink and it, it can shrink like a half size or more and it's not gonna feel very good if you do that. Another don't, which shockingly we get fairly often, don't soak your boots in water and then put them on your feet to try and get a perfect fit like people do with jeans. It's not a thing, it will ruin your boots. That's that's definitely a don't. Don't use, there's some products out there we don't recommend ever using on a boot. Snow Seal is one of them. You know, Snow Seal will be great. It'll make your boots waterproof. Uh, it'll also kind of mummify the leather underneath by like sealing it up so much it dries it out and like makes it almost disintegrate over time. Again, another don't related to heat is if you're familiar with like snowboard boots, hockey skates, ski boots, especially when we talking about very stiff boots like that pro don't put them in the oven don't bake them again the heat will cause things to delaminate and fail uh, or separate or you know things can happen in a boot you don't want to do that another don't and we kind of touched on it in the, the care portion is using conditioners again you don't want to use a lot of conditioner like when i say i use a little bit of the arch conditioner I mean, I just put a dab on a rag and really wipe it around. You don't want to use a lot of conditioner. Believe it or not, we have guys that call us and they'll tell us they condition their boots weekly with leather conditioner. And then they'll call us in a few months and wonder why their boot is like floppy almost because it's so saturated with oils. The leather becomes so soft that it's just like, it's almost like having a leather sock or something. Like you, you just don't want to use a lot of conditioner. If you're in a pinch out there and you need to use something, like if you're in the field and you're just looking at a mom and pop shop, don't use anything that's a high oil content or an oil or a cream. If it's a waxy finish, it's probably safe to use to get you by, um, but I wouldn't use a lot of it and I wouldn't continue to use it. So that's boot 101. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, again, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to answer any questions. That's what we're there for. All this information can be found online on our website and at Mountain Tough. Thank you for watching.